Hello, this is part four of uh, Fun with Debian with Robert Pogson. We're going to set up an LTSP server today. That's a Linux terminal server project. And um, basically we, we expand our previous installation to a normal Debian GNU Linux desktop and we add some packages which allow uh, pin clients to boot uh, via PXE from the server. Without further ado, we will start at get install get install xfce4 gdm3 um, x server xorg video series. It's the one we need. LTSP server standalone. Anything else? I guess that will do. This time it uh, didn't bring in all those other X servers, so we'll say yes. We need networks that it's hard for LTSB to be configured for every possible configuration. It's much easier to just go in there and type in a few numbers and, and be done with it. Okay, we're done. So we have a working system. Now, uh, our display manager isn't running, so I'll turn that on. Uh, I am uh, SSERV GDM3 will make that happen at boot time. So we got that. And same with uh, ISC. DHCP server TFTP D HPA. Oh, I mistyped. Can't talk and type at the same time. There you go. TFTP. Okay, TFTP is running there, but it, had, it has an address of zero. <laughs> that won't work too well, so let's go set that up. TFTP is what transfers the uh, Linux kernel over to the uh, client when it boots. X defaults TF something. Here we go. So it wants an address, and we have to set that up. The address will be the address of this server, 192.168.100.2. Secure means it's going to uh, hide that part of the path from the visitors. Control O, Control X. Uh, now we'll restart TFTP. Restart. And now it should be good. There, it has the correct address. So our TFTP server is listening. Our DHCP server did not start. And uh, in its default, there are configurations for that server. Let's just check it out. Okay, uh, interfaces, it's going to listen on all interfaces. So that's not the problem. Um, let's go and uh, see what's in the log. 
else. Let the start. Okay, and it's going to fail to start, but it'll put in the log what we need to see. Okay, no subnet declaration for this address. So we need a configuration. Now, uh, LTSP has its own configuration. We just have to let DHCP find it. X, uh, LTSP. So there is a configuration file in there, and it's set up for the wrong subnet. So we need to change those subnet addresses. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be wrong in the real world. I'm running in virtual machines, so the networking is different. And I'm not smart enough to know how to fix that. <laughs> so I'll just change the numbers. So uh, subnet is going to be zero. That mask that. Range will be um, three to 250, I guess. Oops. And zero. Zero. 250, that's fine. The main name, we should do something else, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the main name, servers. 100.1. And broadcast address, 100, 255. Routers. Um, I don't know whether I need that or not. Next server, that will be this server. When it boots, it's talking to all kinds of servers, so you have to tell it which one to get the files from. And down there are the files that it's going to be getting. The PXE Linux 0, that will have the bootloader in it, network bootloader. I think we're ready. Control O, Control X. We have to restart the uh, DHCP server. Uh, start. Failed again! What did we do wrong? To not configured to listen on any interfaces. No subnet declared for... Oh! We, we configured the file, but it's not the file that DHCP is looking for. DHCP is looking for the file in a different directory. So we'll just copy that file over. Copy DHCP conf to uh, DHCP, I think it's called. Yes. We'll just copy it to that directory, and then we'll restart our server and we're good psaux rep dhcp and there's our server running it's listening on eth0 which is good and we're all good do we have nfs running psaux rep nfs yes nfs is running uh, now we have to build the client. Uh, we're, the client cheroot is not built yet. ls aux ltsb does not exist. So we have to build that, and the command to do that is ltsb build client. And to speed things up, we'll use our local mirror. Otherwise, it takes forever on the internet. 192.168.100.1 slash Debian. Got to tell it what directory and everything. Go. There. So it's got the valid release signature and it's punching away. So now we're doing.
setting the clock. There, we're done. I think we're ready to go. Um, let's check out our exports. Cap X exports. There's nothing there. We have to export to the clients our um, the, uh, the file system we just created. I could have done that uh, here. Right? So um, pops LTSP I 386 to any host um, oh what are the parameters I've forgotten them they flash by on the screen telling us what to do no subtree check was one of them and um, async was another because it's read only I think it's read only, so we'll put read only in. And uh, there was one other. I can't think what it is, so we'll just leave it at that. If it doesn't work, we can fix it. Control O, Control X. Now we have to restart the NFS server. Uh, NFS kernel server restart. Okay, let's go boot a client, he said. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, we'll start over again. See if this works now. the file, it loaded it, it's booting. So our, our client is booting from the setup that we did and here's our login screen, isn't this cool? Okay, Pogson One potato, two potatoes, three potatoes, four potatoes, five potatoes, six potatoes. Nobody's logged into the GUI yet so it's a slow process. We will uh, get rid of this, close that. I will log out again, and we'll log back in, just to see if it's a little faster after having done it once. Boxing. One potato, two potatoes, three potatoes, and we have a working desktop. <laughs> Okay, um, we have a dictionary. I wonder if the dictionary. Unable to create the data directory. Home pogs are known to no such file or directory. So there's still some configuring to do. File manager. There we go. There shouldn't be anything on Pogson. Uh, edit preferences behavior. This is Linux. We'll use a single click. Thank you. There. So you can see it's snappy. Whoops. It's not so good at redrawing the screen. Um, we haven't fiddled anything with 3D effects or acceleration. Clearly there's an acceleration problem there. Uh, let's run a terminal just to see what typing looks like. So it can keep up with uh, with typing, it just can't keep up with redrawing the screen. Okay, we'll uh, log out. One potato, one potato, two potatoes, three potatoes. This is fast, and it's fast even on old hardware. So thank you very much, and we'll see you again for part